All right, Derek, here we go. Energy drinks versus an actual pre-workout before a lift. What's your go-to? Neither. Ooh, you just, yeah. are you a psycho? Are you a psycho? I, you just, I think part of it is once again, I, my background was in rowing. So our practice started at 5.00 AM. Yeah. So okay. I didn't want to wake up in the morning and chug something and then get out on the boat and go for two hours. So I just got mm. in the habit of getting up and getting out in the boat and going. Yeah. And I've also, I've never had a pre-workout that I didn't feel uh, like got me a little bit too high. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 yeah uh, so if I ever do go that way, it's energy drink, but 85% of the time it's none of the above. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if we're looking at this and we're trying to take a scientific view, it's like, what is the purpose of an energy drink or a pre-workout drink? The idea would be that it would somehow improve performance and or adaptations gleaned from the workout, right? And so the energy drinks, all it is is a, is a vehicle for caffeine. And so if you're trying to stratify like best to worst vehicles for caffeine outside of personal preference, because personal preference is going to be like top of the list, like what's not going to make you sick? What do you like the taste of? What do you have available to you? Like that, those are all top top of the tops. But after that, if you're like, okay, should it be an energy drink? Should it be coffee? Should it be a gum? Should it be a lozenge? Should it be like whatever suppository? <laughs> at, at that point, you're really looking at timing. And so what we know is that like, for example, the caffeine in coffee is going to peak faster than the caffeine in an energy drink um, on the order of 15 to 20 minutes. And then at that point, you're talking about dosing. And so it's like, all right, energy drinks, very wildly with how much caffeine is in there. Some of them have a hundred uh, milligrams, some hundred, I think the big monsters have like 160 milligrams and some of the like uh, bang energy drinks are like 200 or 300 or whatever. And it's like the ergogenic dose for caffeine ranges between three to nine milligrams per kilogram body weight, which is a huge range, right? If I'm 90 kilos, we're talking 270, like all the way up to 810 milligrams. And like that, that's like, the difference between one energy drink maybe or like three cups of coffee and like 10. And so the dosing, the dosing there is, is kind of the, the next strategy. So I don't think it really matters where you get your caffeine from as long as it's the right dose and you prefer it. Uh, it could be gum. It takes even a little bit. Uh, that's a little faster, but some people don't like the GI side effects uh, that come with that. Those tend to be a little more prevalent um, as far as energy drink versus coffee. Again, it's more personal preference. The extra stuff in the energy drink isn't really doing anything for you, like the vitamins, the taurine, the whatever. It's all kind of a waste. It's just if you like the way it tastes, go for it. Uh, and then as far as pre-workouts go, usually those have a some sort of proprietary blend of bullshit in there. And it's like, yeah, we put caffeine and this homeopathic dose of vitamin B6 and a homeopathic dose of creatine. It's like not enough to actually get you any gains, but it's enough that the supplement remembers that it was there at one point. And it's it's like, like a, there's, there's more ink in the label than there is a dose in the can. That's our thing. Yeah. So like our Perry RX, for example, you could take that at any time of the day and get all of the supplements that we know would increase the adaptation you would get from the workout. And there are not a lot of those, uh, beta alanine, citrulline, uh, creatine, um, a handful of others, uh, maybe some beetroot extract and various other, various other forms of nitrates may improve the adaptations that you're getting from your workout. So more strength, more hypertrophy, more cardiorespiratory fitness, but it doesn't really matter when you take those things. And so designating something as a pre-workout only, I'm like, eh, it's probably a miss. Other, unless you're just talking about the caffeine, in which case, let's just talk about caffeine. And at that point, I'm like, what is your preferred vehicle of getting the caffeine into your system uh, and then dosing. So I, I typically start people on the lower end if they want to use caffeine, three to nine milligrams per kilo, uh, 30 to 45 minutes prior, and then uh, just see how they feel. And if you feel good, you feel like, okay, I've got, I'm focused, I'm able to to do the, ex, the, the training session, I don't have any side effects, great. You don't need to go up from there. If you're not feeling it, you can try adding more. Uh, my caveat here is if it's after 3 or 4 p.m., it's probably not worth the potential impact in your circadian rhythm from a sleep standpoint just to lift a few more pounds. Um, and also, I don't want to see you dry scoop that shit. I've seen, <laughs> like, like, I get it, your core, you're in the car, you just dry scoop it straight to the dome. And I'm like, oh boy, like that's just, 
for me, I'm like, this is a choking hazard. Like something bad is going to happen. <laughs> it's the same people who ate sand as a kid. That's right. Yeah. I did think about what if I made a supplement? We cha- we rebranded Perry RX to Crank and it was intranasal and you had to do one line, <laughs> one line per 50 kilos of body weight. You just want, do you know how well that would sell? Oh like, man. People would love it. Yeah. Uh, it, Coming into your to nose, a, uh, into your muscles. Near you. 100%. Yeah. We'll call it crank, intranasal pre workout. Yeah. Weight based dosing. It was either it was either that or like a, a pre workout dip. You just like, all right, caffeine. That has caffeine, to exist. Down. You, you just look, you just chew this thing for 45 minutes, <laughs> get yourself right. I mean, maybe that we'll has do. To exist. Maybe we'll do both. And uh, that's how you know that barbell medicine has jumped the shark. We just fully went away from evidence-based practice. So we just started play, play into the masses. We got a big TikTok audience and we're just like snorting pre-workout on. <laughs> that's the, oh, man. All right. Somebody's going somebody's gonna to email us and be like, dude, that, what a great idea. Can I use that? I'm like, yes, take it. I don't want it. We're going to see it on the market six months from now. That's right. Uh, okay. Okay.